of you. Yes, my name is Jacob Cox. I'm originally from Georgia. I've lived in Colorado Springs now for the past six to seven years. And uh, I love it here. So we'll see if we can see the awakening of the heart and hope after this presentation that we start to at least open up your hearts a little bit today. Um, and I think we'll be able to do that. So, and I think it's very important because we all have them. Every single person has a heart, just like every single one of us has a brain and a body. But just like the brain, we hear that, we heard that expression, we use five to 10% of our brains on average. And you know, when you get into an argument with someone, when you fight with someone, um, you say things you don't mean, you throw a punch you shouldn't have, it's not until you go back later and you calm down, you relax, you're taking some deep breaths, and you realize I shouldn't have done that. That's when you're starting to use the more uh, new parts of your brain, the neocortex, the frontal amygdala, amygdalas, and you know, those are stuff that um, scientists find now, that's the, the new part of the brain. Well, I think we know just about as much, probably less, about the heart than we even do the brain. And the Heart Math Institute is doing a lot of great research on that now. And so I think it's important to know that educating the mind without an educating the heart is no education at all. That if you don't know how to use your heart, using your mind is worthless. You know, it can, it can go here, you can think about this, you can concentrate on things. People tell you you gotta focus on this thing to manifest it. If you don't realize that your heart is the other half, if not more of the equation, you're never gonna manifest the things that you want. You can think about those things all day. So let's talk about it. This incredible organ, most people will tell you, is just something that pumps blood into your, to your body, to, to all parts of your body. We know about it from Eastern traditions, the chakra, the green, the middle one from the seven, uh, fundamental chakra system that we see from Eastern traditions. Um, our heart, however, has its own magnetic field. It can be measured several, several feet away from your body. Um, negative emotions can create the nervous system to have chaos, but positive emotions can do the exact opposite. Literally, we can feel our way into disease and we can feel our way out of it as well. Positive emotions can increase the brain's ability to make good decisions too. So as we feel good in our heart, as we love, we have compassion, it actually makes our brain have better decisions make better decision making for us throughout our day, throughout our lifetime. Um, positive emotions can boost our immune system just by focusing on positive emotions. Positive emotions can also create psychological benefits in our body, healings in our body. Um, I think this one's an awesome one down here. Mother's brain waves can synchronize her baby's heartbeats even when they are a few feet apart. I'm sure my partner can attest to that. Um, in fetal development, this is one of the most incredible things. In fetal development, the heart forms and starts beating before the brain begins to develop. Your heart is beating and, and, and doing all the things it's supposed to do before your brain is even coming into question. And the heart's magnetic field can be measured from several feet away, and I will show you a little bit later that I would imagine a master of the heart, a master of the electromagnetic field can probably be couldn't be measured all would be infinite. It would be one with created one with all the universe. So did you know that the heart has a system of neurons that have both short and long-term memory and their signals sent to the brain can affect our emotional experiences? This thing that we have inside of our bodies is beyond anything that we have any comprehension of. And hopefully today we'll tap into a little bit. Some of the qualities of the heart is greater discernment and intuitive clarity when we are feeling the emotions of love, kindness, compassion. We have a better intuition. Um, one of the scientific studies that the heart math is doing is um, they're taking people and putting them in front of a computer screen, randomly throwing pictures at them. And what's funny is the heart is picking up these images before they're even shown. It is either you know, making your body sweat, your heartbeat is beating up, it's going into frustration or anxiety, or it's going into compassion and love. Before the picture is even shown, even the people flashing the pictures don't know what's coming up next. But your heart does, and every single one of us has one. The core, it's also the core of your authentic self. Love is what we really are. Every single one of us has a skin color, a, a gender, or some clothes that you're wearing, but every single one of us is dressed up in disguise. We're all love, we're all love in the flesh. 
We have a deeper connection with ourselves and others as we learn to love ourselves, have compassion for ourselves, forgive ourselves, because ultimately the relationship that we have with ourselves transpires to that outside of us. So if I am hard on myself, I bully myself, I can probably do that to the world as well, the people that I come in contact with. And so I think one of the greatest abilities of the heart is the ability to overcome obstacles. You, no matter if it's sports, education, um, a work, a job, whatever it is, when someone says, you've been doing this, but your heart's not in it. It's a figure of speech, but it's literally true. Your heart isn't in the work that you do. Your heart's not in the, the job that you do. Whatever it is, if your heart's in it, people can see it, you can feel it, you know it. And so I think that all of this comes together to me. The heart is a, what makes us the hero within, the hero's journey. Each of us, each of us, the hero of our own show, the hero of our own life. Everybody wants to find someone else, some, some Superman, some great speaker, some great talker. No, you are the hero. You are the one you've been looking for. You are all that is, ever has been, and never will be encapsulated into human form just for a little while. So some of the surprising roles of the heart is that it has a compl complex nervous system called the heart brain that encodes and processes information, and the heart is sending more information to the brain than our brain sends to our hearts. It's actually picking up on circumstances, events, situations, people's electromagnetic fields, and then when you come in contact with someone, you feel that person's resonance. You feel like that person is really nice, I can feel their love, or you can feel the opposite as well. And it makes functional decisions independent of the cranial brain. Your heart is picking up on things and it is assessing things and it is making its own decisions on what to do with your body. I think that's incredible. If this heart brain has neurons in it and it makes decisions, it's just an incredible, incredible understanding. Positive emotions can increase the brain's ability to make good decisions. And I think that you said that earlier with just being in compassion, being in gratitude, being in love, being in kindness, that, that coherence between the brain and the heart allows you to make better decisions for yourself instead of being you know, full of anxiety, fear, judgment, and those kind of things. It also has, creates psychological benefits in our body as we live in fear, as we live in um, a state where we're always worried. What's around the next corner? What's gonna happen? What's, what's this, what's that? Um, people who watch war movies on television all the time. When you're constantly watching things on television or in the world or in the news, your body, your brain, your heart, they don't really know whether those things are actually happening or whether you're imagining them, whether you're reading about them. So when we actually watch war on television and our body is made of trillions and trillions of cells, they start to take that message on. The, the world outside is fighting. Everything is going to disarray. And so let's do the same. Let's compete with each other. Let's have competition. We're fighting and that's where cancer and diseases start. When we're constantly in a state of fear or anxiety or worry, but the opposite is true. We can boost our immune system by conjuring up our positive emotions. Constantly being gratitude, constantly being thankful, being happy, being loving. So when we are frustrated, these are really honestly the, the weight patterns that we're in. Even just looking at this makes you feel awkward and um, <laughs> not good. It's so jagged and rough, not smooth at all, up and down. It's a very feel, fearful pattern. And the, and the patterns of appreciation are much smoother. The, the, the pattern of love is much more, the higher, the lower crescents and lower troughs, much more in tune with itself. So we have to learn to live with love, live with compassion, live in our, in our kindness. Um, because by feeling this stress all the time, no matter what it is, whenever, what the worry is, whatever you are right now, you're talking about this or that or what's going on in the world, how much I hate my job, you're feeling stressed. And you can only feel positive emotions or negative emotions in some degree of that at any given moment. I can't be super positive and super negative at the same time. I can only be one or the other. 
So this is probably why, more than likely, cardiovascular disease is the number one killer in the world. In every country, year after year, nothing kills more people than cardiovascular disease. And I would say that is because our heart is something more than just an organ that pumps blood, that living in frustration, living in that anxiety, creates disharmony. And enough of that, and you can do it for a little while, but if you constantly live your life like that, in that frustrated state, you're living a life that is probably going to end sooner than later. So we have to go from a world where we live in fear, I'm not good enough, no one likes me, to a world of love and compassion, kindness, and, and really honestly to ourselves more than anyone else. So choosing to be happy is literally good for your health, right? So like being happy, being in the moment, not worrying about bills and the house and all the things. I mean, those things come, but as far as I've realized, I'm still here to take on those challenges today, so I can you know, do my best to take care of them, but as far as worry or anxiety goes about them, I try my best not to worry about them, not to be anxious about them, to be stressed over them. Um, I really, and I do, like anyone else, and so when I do that, I do try to go take some time to myself, think about what's going on, assess the situation, be like, so far, everything has come up against me, I've been able to take it on so far, so I'm just gonna go with that. And as we do fill our body with full of vibrant energy, the physical body will naturally fix itself. Just like you get a cut, your body can constantly repairs itself, right? But when we're in these states of, of anxiety and fear, our body doesn't have that time. It doesn't have the time to fix itself. It doesn't have the time to cure cancer for ourselves, which, which is what we're designed to do. We can cure our own cancer because we created our own cancer. It's not something random. It's not something that just happened. Every single one of us has to take responsibility for our own life and realize, hey, maybe I had something to do with that. My thinking, my um, emotions, and what I've seen is people call it spontaneous remissions. I don't see anything spontaneous about me. It's spontaneous, but it's, it doesn't make sense for people to say, oh, it's just random, it just, just happened. No, when you go back and look at these cases, most of the time people change their life. They quit their job, they go live their life in a way that, oh, this is how I should have lived it before. Jumping out of airplanes, going to see family, you know, going, making life what it should be. So we wanna take this really fractured, ugly, harsh life that affects our respiratory system, our heart rate, our blood pressure, and turn it into a quick, coherent state where we have these free-flowing, beautiful, easy-going lives like we should have. And that's, that's the point, is to get out of frustration and shift into appreciation. So I think it's incredibly important to talk about what is appreciation. Like, actually appreciating a flower. If you love a flower, don't pick it up, because if you pick it up, it dies, and it ceases to be what you love. So if you love the flower, let it be. Love is not about possession. Love is about appreciation. And I think that's just a beautiful saying because we all want to possess and you have to do this and do as I say. And, you know, love set it free and it comes back at yours. Love is about letting things be wild and free. And I think that's a beautiful thing. So really learning and taking in appreciation for life and allowing others to be exactly where they are right now. So these heart rhythms directly impact physical and mental performances, we're talking about that, and the heart signal especially affect the brain centers involved in strategic thinking, reaction time, and self-regulation. So literally, these two organs, the heart and the brain, have such an incredible connection with each other. And so in order to do this, we need to rewire our brains for higher consciousness by paying attention to love, compassion, and joy actually focusing on those things every day instead of our boss or the things that we don't like or you know the, the thing that's happening out there i'm not even going to mention it it's me too um, frustrated so focusing on love and compassion and the things that we love let's change this vibrational field it's only going to take so many of us to actually start to change our vibrational field and to create a new one and then other people will pick it up around you it's not that difficult. It's something that every single one of us has. We all have a heart. We all know about positive and negative emotions. And all we have to do, literally, is change. So 
I think some things that are important to focus on, promote what you love rather than bashing what you hate. So many people would get you caught up in that conversation. You know, let me tell you what happened there. Let me tell you what I saw on the news today. I, most people won't even tell them because they know I won't even listen most of the time. Or I'll just stand there like, um, I'm like, did you hear what I said? Like, no, I'm trying not to. <laughs> so it's really, really important to focus on what we were like. Um, the rapture is literally being caught up in love, right? So, so many people get you caught up in negative things and the things that you don't like. Why not take today and tell somebody what you love about them, about the sunset, about life, about art, about this conference, and start making that a priority every day to actually get caught up with what you love about the world, what's amazing about being alive. <clears throat> so I think this is an incredible saying. It matters not who you love, where you love, why you love, when you love, or how you love. It matters only that you love. Only that. Because you can only do one or the other, love or hate, in some degree of either one of those at the current now. And I think it's so important that you yourself, as much as anybody in the entire universe, deserve your own love and your own affection. So often we want to give it to somebody else. Somebody else deserves it. Somebody else is worth loving. But you, yourself, are an incredible point in the universe that deserves your own love and affection, your own time. <clears throat> and so I think when we really start to do this, when we really start to love ourselves, to care about ourselves, and realize that loving people live in a loving world, and hostile people live in a hostile world, the same world, right? So we can be in this room and experiencing two different things that I would hope that most probably people <laughs> in this room right now will not be experiencing something different to too much of a degree, but we can live on the same planet, you can go to the same movie, you can go to the same dinner. I've been at the same dinner table and experienced a great dinner with great servers, and the person next to me hated their experience. The person wasn't nice enough to do it. They didn't bring their meal on on time. You know what I mean? All the, all the things that they made up in their head that the world was like already, that's the experience that they got at the dinner table, that's the experience they got at Walmart, that's the experience they got wherever they go. It doesn't matter because that is your idea of what the world is like already. It doesn't matter. It's the same world. But it's our idea of it. So our brains and our hearts are constantly, constantly communicating. Every single minute. Every single second. We're always communicating with our brains and our hearts. This relationship is probably one of the most important that I have found so far in the human body. So the brain and the heart coherence empowers us to experience deep states of intuition on the man. So just like I told you about that study earlier where the heart math was showing these pictures on computers and then the heart was responding to those stimuli before they even happened, you can respond to people before they walk into the room. You can literally know because of someone's field what's coming or what's not coming. So we need to learn how to do this, right? How can we make our heart and our brains move into coherence together as one, as one unit? And I would actually even say that part with the brain has its own masculine and feminine side. But I would say the marrying of the heart and the brain itself is a marriage that we should be working active for ourselves. And so when we can move our hearts into this state, this coherent state, instead of an incoherent state where it's frustrated, we're focusing on things that we don't like, and feeling emotions that we don't want to feel, um, we can move into this coherent state. And as we move into this coherent state, our heart really, it starts to evolve. It starts to wake up. It starts to blossom. The awakening happens for the heart. It's almost like this dormant plant that's not blossoming, it's not flowering. But as we move into this coherent state, we literally can create electromagnetic fields that come from the brain and heart as these two become one with each other, as they marry each other. I think this is a, this is a painting by Alex Gray, and I think this describes exactly what we're talking about. Here's your heart center, and here's the 
this big electromagnetic field around the arc, and then here's your pineal gland, your third eye, and here's what's the, what we call the halo. It's a two-dimensional image, but I think this picture makes it seem a little bit more three-dimensional at least. But the field of the heart is said to be at least 100 times stronger electrically and up to 5,000 times stronger magnetically. Your heart is literally more powerful than your brain is. And so I think this is why when we see pictures of Jesus, Buddha, it could be anyone. There are all kinds of saints where we see pictures like this. Look at this. His heart is on fire. It's, you know, beams of light coming out. And around his head, you can see halo, you can see light coming out. And all around the world, um, in churches and books and paintings, you see Christ like this with his heart. Um, he's pointing to his heart, he's pointing up to his, to his head up there. And I think what he's, this is symbolizing, at least to me, and, and, and at least some aspects, obviously it has multiple meanings to it, but this is coherence. This is an individual who is in coherence with their mind and their brain. And look at that. You see him, you see his halo around his head from his pineal gland. And this field right here around his heart. That one's bigger. And as well, it's not just Jesus, right? Jesus' partner Mary. It's just saying. I don't know what the what the churches tell you, but I think this is his partner. I think this was his um, divine partner. Um, some people call it the what do you call it? the uh, Twin flame. I think that's what we're talking about. Look, she's the same. Her heart, the light, the, the light around her head coming from her pineal gland. These are two human beings in coherence. And when you become a human being in coherence, I believe that's when you find the others. And again, I did show you pictures of this all day where these people are shown with their hearts open, their halos glowing. <laughs> And I think it's important to note that even though I just showed you pictures of Jesus and Mary Magdalene, I'm not excluding anybody out of this discussion of you being able to do this because Martin Luther King said, everybody can be great because no, anybody can serve. You don't have to have a college degree to serve. You don't have to make your subjects and your verb degree to serve. You only need a heart filled with grace, a soul generated by love. Anybody can love, anytime, any moment. Every single person that we talk about, Jesus, Mary, Buddha, uh, Mother Teresa, every single one of them had a brain and a heart just like we do, right? I just think they were using it more than we do. And if we just start using our brains and our hearts a little bit more, all the things that these saints, these mystics, enlightened beings have done, we can do too. We can walk on water, we can fly around, we can do all the things that they did. We all have that same heart. So, literally, love is upgrading us. We have these, these dormant parts of our DNA. 20 out of 64 amino acids currently turned on. And science will tell you the majority of your DNA is junk. What we find out now is that you can literally turn the dormant parts of your DNA on. Loving more, breathing deeply, practicing gratitude, literally have an effect. Your emotions have an effect on your DNA. They can literally blossom and they can literally turn on switches that change your physiology and makeup of yourself. Each one of us has a heart to be able to do this and it's nothing that nobody in particular can or can't do. Everybody can do it. And what's really cool about it is the ascension that we're here for, the ascension summit, it's all built into the DNA. Everything that we need to know, the book, the codes, it's all inside of us. There's no person, there's no story, there's no... I got to make it to this one over here to make sure I get this in. Everything that you need is inside of you. So I think this is incredible information because this is a two-dimensional picture. What basically this is is the blue dots represent DNA. And the fear, like I said, is a lower wave pattern that touches really few parts of the DNA. But love is a higher frequency, shorter wavelengths that activate the antenna. So it hits more parts of the DNA as it grows through. So as you're loving, as you're focusing on compassion, um, you're literally turning on the switches. The 20 out of 64 amino acids, can, the extra ones, the junk DNA can turn on. And I believe what's in there is probably telepathy, 
flying, walking on water. The fact that you're literally the master of the universe, we just don't know yet. Every single one of us. And so here's a more detailed picture of the same thing, the same phenomenon. Love is a more sporadic way to it than fear, and it turns it on. And the fear just touches less of the DNA. So we're not, you're not turning on, you're staying in that dormant state. And I'm, in fact, I would, I would have to assume that <clears throat> the longer you stay in, you could probably turn off some of the 20 that you got available to you. If you can turn them on, you can definitely turn them off by like constantly living here. So the key, the magic, is love. It's the most important thing, it really is. And our heart emits electromagnetic fields that change according to our emotions. So as we focus on love and compassion or focus on fear or things that make, make us upset, we have this tiny field. You know, you're upset, you're angry, you have a tiny field. And so when people say things to you, mean to you, make fun of you, this is a field that's not protecting you, right? So when someone says something negative to you, it's much easier for that to get in. It's much easier for that to stick. And you'd be like, man, that made me feel bad. I didn't like how that felt. But when we live in love and we create these huge abundance of electromagnetism around the body, there's very little that can get in. Very little comments, very little energy, very little someone saying something to you, being smart, you know, whatever. That can't get through a big feel like that. So as we learn to love, and, and create these incredible magnetic fields of energy it starts to pump out all around us and it gets bigger and bigger and I, like i said right now they can measure fields that are you know five thousand times greater than the heart again i think someone who's a master of this it's probably isn't it you can probably measure it forever and never find the end but it is true we do create these electromagnetic fields and this is very Similar to all things, you know, this toroidal field is around the earth. It's the way orange is made, apples are made, the torus, the universe is making and creating toruses from the biggest to the small. Even galaxies um, or stars take this path in the galaxy where they will go down and come back out and come back down around. We've seen stars in the galaxy do the same pattern. So no matter how big or small, we see the same toroidal field in the universe over and over and over again. The universe is just a generating a torus machine, you know. So yeah, we're just we're just these incredible fields that we can make. These are just really beautiful pictures that I like to I like to look at and think, you know, hey man, the more I look at it, the more I can feel it, the more I can see, like, hey, I can do that too. It's and I love that it's not that this isn't Jesus, it's not Buddha. It's just anybody. Like, you can put your face on that. It's that's all of us. So the the others can pick up signature of your emotions through the electromagnetic energy rating from your heart. Whether you're a loving person or someone who you know, wants to take advantage of people, people can pick up on that. Your fields, even though you have your own field, everybody's field is, you know, can become in contact with others. And this is why before even speaking to somebody, you literally can feel their field, you can feel their hearts, whether it's down, whether it's open, whether it's loving, you know, whether they don't like themselves. I felt many of those things with many different people long before we actually made contact with words or anything else. So our thoughts and emotions affect the heart's, affect the heart's magnetic field, which energetically affects those in our environment, whether or not we are conscious of it or not. So it doesn't matter if you want people to know or not, they can pick up on your field. You know, you're walking around and you can shut yourself down, but that's, that's just easy for someone to pick up on as well. So, here we are. Let's, you know, let's love each other. Let's take this information, which is really some of the most incredible information I've ever met, and start to feel it with each other. Let's start to create love, compassion, kindness. These things really do matter. It really does. It really does change the world. Whether you can see it or not, it doesn't matter. The electromagnetic fields can be picked on, and you can feel it. Every single one of us can feel it. I'm not saying talking about something that you can't feel. This is something every single one of us can know, because the people that you love, your family, when you're with them, you feel that feeling of love, um, and it's definitely there. So, and this is a painting by Alex Gray. I love Alex's paintings. And I think, again, it just shows, it 
beautiful, the light around people, love, kindness, that I love it because, like I said, again, it doesn't have any kind of mystic or saint or anybody. This is all, every single one of us can feel love with whoever, it doesn't matter. And I think what's really important about these paintings is that the show is our love matters. Like, our families matter. You don't have to be the CEO, you don't have to be the president, you don't have to own a company. You don't have to have a million dollars to change the world. Your love with your family, your friends, your community, the job you go to every day, every single one of those things matters. Every single one of those things creates a ripple effect in the world. When we stand here and we love, we create ripples of feelings of energy that, that, that go out. They don't just stay in here in our bodies. <clears throat> they penetrate the fields around us. We add it to the magnetic field of the earth that we're literally walking around in all of us all the time. So as we become, you know, more light beings, more loving beings, we create more children who are loving. Because every single one of us have a heart, a brain, and a body. And every single one of us are on this earth and connected to it. And really honestly, this is the mother. <laughs> we're connected to her. And the Earth's magnetic field resonates and vibrates at the same frequency as our heart rhythms do in our brain and our brain waves, which is really important. We need to get in coherence with the Earth. She's changing. Her vibration is rising. The Schumann County resonance of the planet, which was 7 hertz, is rising rapidly since the 80s, almost doubling that to be about 14 hertz now. I would say that is Mother Earth's heartbeat rising. And as we saw in some of Elizabeth's stuff earlier, somatics and frequencies, things are held in place by sound. And her sound is rising. Her vibration is rising. And you can either go with it, or you can stay here, no judgment. But this is a graduation class. It is time to ascend. It is time to go into higher dimensions, higher understandings, free will, free energy. I think that's what most of us here are here to do. So, a change of heart changes the world. Because your heart is the world. Your heart is connected to everything and every person in all of the universe. All of it. So, right now, I want you guys to watch a little clip here. A certain number. When a certain number of people come together and then choose in a moment of time to create a precise emotion in their hearts, that emotion literally can intentionally influence the very fields that sustain the life on planet Earth. These fields are now implicated in everything from the immune response of humans uh, throughout the planet, climate, weather patterns, uh, uh, cycles of war and peace, our ability to solve problems, our cognitive abilities. Uh, all of these, as different as they sound from one another, are all linked to our relationship to the magnetic fields of the Earth. So what makes this so beautiful is every human on the planet is linked to the field. Not every human on the planet has to be consciously aware of their relationship to benefit from what a relatively few number of people come to understand. And the bottom line is this, is that when we choose to feel feelings that create what is called coherence in our bodies, coherence is the language, the quality of the language between our heart and our brain. Certain kinds of heart-based experiences, such as appreciation, gratitude, forgiveness, care, compassion, those are the ancient understandings that have always been taught in the, the, the truest traditions of our past. And now our science is finding that those same traditions are now documented as very real effect on our hearts. When we can feel those feelings in our bodies, they're mirrored in the field that everyone benefits from the experience of the has the ability to change the planet by first you have to change yourself. 
very important. It's what every single saint, mystic, Buddha, Christian, and Christ have always said to us. When the power of love overcomes the love of power, the world will know peace. I'm ready for that day. I hope that you guys all are. It's coming. It's here. It's in this building. It's in this room. It's in your own heart. Every single one of us has responsibility now more than ever to want to overcome what divides us, what separates us. So, let's do it. How do we get coherence with ourselves? How do we have that brain and that heart have coherence right here, right now? Do you guys want to do it? Mm-hmm. You guys want to do it? Yeah. Yes. All right, let's do it. Let's take a deep breath. Take another deep breath. Close your eyes. Put your hand on your heart. Now, start to imagine the world that you want to see. Imagine what it looks like to have a beautiful world where people aren't dying because they don't have energy, suffering because they don't have food. What does that feel like? How does your heart sing with joy? How does it make you feel that every single person on this planet has something? That every single person has the pursuit of life, love, happiness, joy. Imagine what it's like that no one is taken advantage of. In a world where we're all one, free energy is abundant. Imagine what it feels like to just walk down the street and have someone smile at you, passing a loving hello. Imagine what it feels like to have a world where there's no presidents, no dictators, no war, no violence, no religion. It's possible. There have been many before that have experienced this on this planet. I think places like Atlantis, High Brazil, Lemuria, and probably experienced this kind of planet, this kind of world. It's not something that we have to go to another planet to experience. It's right here right now. So imagine it. Feel it in your heart. How does it feel to live on a planet like this where everyone gets to eat clean, nutritious, food, free of chemicals, air that's clean and abundant, water that's clean and abundant, a life that you feel proud of, where you don't have to work all day long to come home and see your kids for a couple hours before they have to go to bed. And we get to take care of our young, take care of our older people, take care of everybody. A plan that works for everyone. It's here. And we create it. We create it with coherence. We create it by this room right here, right now. Concentrated on the same exact things. Feeling the same exact feelings. Rippling out into our city, our community, to our state, to our country, to our world, and to our universe. This is coherence. This is how the practice works. When we feel and see in our mind's eye the world that we want to live in, and we stay in this moment for a couple minutes, just three minutes normally, we can actually do that. Imagine. Obviously, they've written songs about it, books about it. Now it's time to actually see it. It's just beyond the veil. It's just beyond the illusion that's holed around us all the time. Told what it looks like, how to feel, how to talk, what to believe. It's just an illusion that's just 
held together by thoughts and ideas, by fear. Guess what? Love shatters that. It shatters the illusion. So I just want to say, welcome to the Ascension Summit. Welcome to the new earth. One that works for all of us. My name is Jacob Cox. This is my presentation on Awakening the Heart. And I hope you guys all enjoy it. Divine, each and every single one of you. And I'm so grateful to be up here today. Namaste.